Jordan, Jay, what do you go by, big guy? Jay. We like Jay. Jay Valentine. I love oh, it. I forget that that's my username, yeah, honestly. No. I swear to God. But that's how people mostly... Is that how people mostly know you? They they mostly call me Jay. Okay. But... Um, Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Jordan Jay Gonzalez. Gon- yeah, Jay. I got it. Cool. Yeah, that's how you say it in Spanish. But that's a funny story how that even came out to be. Yeah, because that's a... Yeah, we'll get into that one. Because <laughs> even my son's name, instead of my Luis Eduardo, but my son's name is Noah Alexander. My daughter's name has a whole Arabic name, Genevieve Isla oh, Verdusco. So she has like... That's a dope name, though. That, I, I like that. Uh, we're good? Everything's good? All right, baby. One more time. Eto Salai Podcast, baby. Most authentic, most organic podcast out here. Let's go. Levántense la verga. Si están desvelados, pues levántense, güey, un tequilita ahorita. Sí, para que se levanten. Si están crudos, un tequilita para curársela. But still, 2024, we back. Shout out to Kanye Rumbar for hosting us one more time. And I have the pleasure, the honor, to sit with the one and only Jay Gonzalez next to me, baby. Let's go. Appreciate you. Or appreciate you. Jordan Gonzalez, Jordan Gonzalez, or Mr. Valentine. <laughs> I like the last one better. <laughs> Valentine's coming up soon, so hey. by, by the time this is out, Valentine is a couple of weeks away. I probably will not have anything special planned. I mean, we're going to be home in the dark, sitting in silence. It's crazy. No, you won't. Stop. Just manifest some love. You got to manifest some good love. It, New Year, most definitely. I yeah. think that's a, the season of finding, finding love, finding love for yourself, okay. first and foremost. Yes. If you can't, we've always said if you can't, find your self-love, then you have no uh, capability or ability to love somebody else at that full potential. But before we get into that, appreciate you, dog. Hey, my God. Man, long time I, know, I know. A long time coming. We've had conversations, met you at Domingando officially. Yeah. Us stepping out, finally going to events, you know, got us to meet. And you well, do. We actually it. met through Mark. Mark, 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 Mark. Mark's podcast, remember? Because you were supposed oh, to be on it. Oh, yes, he, yes. He was hosting it, and then at that night, I think you had something going on with Post Malone that weekend. Yeah, I was in San Diego. <laughs> yeah, and, and he told us, like, yeah, he couldn't make it, but it was for a good reason. But it was so crazy because I, like, all of his guests, shout out to him, are East Coast. Yeah, mm-hmm. kind of East Coast. And then to find out that you're literally down the street yeah. in hometown, I'm like, wait, we got to link up then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we're here, man. So, first of all, how are you doing? Let's start there. Yeah. How are we doing? Um, blessed. Extremely blessed. Uh, right now, the year is finishing off amazing for me. Um, definitely super different from how the year started. Mm. Uh, but amazing, man. I'm so grateful. I think it's been a lot of self-reflecting the last couple of months. Like, literally, um, November to December, things just 360. Wow. And so, I've just really been just enjoying that moment. Kind of everything that's been going on. Yeah. Um, so great, man. I can't, there's no complaints, man. You do a little bit of a lot. <laughs> Let's start there. Right. Real reels media. Yeah. Real media. LA. Um, you worked alongside a amazing person, Mr. HB, my brother. Love him. I can't wait to have, this is a sign. I need you on the podcast. HB. I've been telling you for, for months, but you do that. Mm-hmm. You're an influencer. Yeah. You work with a lot of brands. Mm-hmm. You have your own business. Yes. And Let's just get started, man. Where for the people that don't know you, born and raised, where, how many siblings, That's single, cool. married, divorced, looking <laughs> on the market, what's some, up? Some kids uh, scattered away that I don't know about. <laughs> hey, that fool looks like you. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, <laughs> now, um, that's crazy that you say all that because you never think about everything you're doing. You just do it. Yeah. And so when you mention all that, you're like, damn, I actually, I'll get into that, but that's crazy. Actually, I guess I do do a little bit of a lot. You do a little bit of a lot. Um, so... 30 now, 30, enjoying my 30s, uh, but I was born in Pomona, and then I was raised in Moreno Valley uh, my whole life, so IE boy. Um, was out there until I was about 23. Um, you know, my mom was single when I was five. She decided to go out there, her first marriage, and then um, had a divorce. We stayed out there um, and just kind of just trying to figure out life out there. When I was 18, I started working at a warehouse, 
And I had like zero idea what my future was going to be. Like, mm -hmm. you know, in high school, everyone's like, oh, I want to do this. I'm going to be a teacher. I'm going to be a, you know, a doctor. Yeah. I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing tomorrow, you know? And so my mom was like, well, you know, you want to go to college? You're going to work, pick one. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, I don't know. I was like, I'll just, I'll go to, you know, JC, a junior college and I'll go work at a warehouse. When I was in there, you know, you start talking to kind of the older cats in there. They give you life lessons. Every day is a life lesson. You're out here offloading a trailer. They're like, you know, when I was your age. <laughs> and um, so I met up with this guy, actually, and he was like, you know, you know, what do you want to do in life? And I think at that time I started looking into, like, being law enforcement. And he's like, oh, you got to join the Army. He's like, you're going to join the military. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah. He's like, you want, you know, you want to be a cop? You want to survive and live and be properly trained? He's like, go join the military. And literally that man told me once, join the military. I was like, got it. Gone. Went to a recruiter's office, you know, signed up. Uh, I was originally going to join the Marines, but then I found out that the Marines actually, uh, I could be wrong, but they don't need constitutional approval to get deployed. So I was like, well, I don't know who's going to be president in the future. Um, so um, in the Army, they do. They do need constitutional approval. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll join the Army. Went in the Army, went in the Reserves. Um, I ended up being uh, Mortuary Affairs, which is basically uh, we recover the remains of, like, fallen soldiers. Oh, man. Yeah, so anywhere from recovering <clears throat> in the field, you know, when they're passed away, their personal effects, um, to kind of processing through the morgue all the way through the funeral process. You can get anywhere in between. Um, but I like that one because it, at that time I wanted to get into like forensic science. And so you do autopsies. Yeah. And so I'm like, you know, 20 cutting up bodies and stuff. And so I did that, but it was reservist. So I was in active duty. Yeah. So I came back and, you know, I was 18, 19. And for like the longest, I was just trying to be a cop. You know, I worked jobs here and there. I was like at LA Fitness as like a personal training director for a minute went into a sales job and I was just bouncing around, but every day just trying to be a cop. And then um, somehow I eventually ended up into security, personal security, bodyguard for um, celebrities out here. Oh shit. <laughs> so I was 23 and I had a buddy of mine in the army and he was like, he's like, Hey man, why don't you uh, do security in the meantime? Like it'll look really good on your resume as you're trying to be a cop. And I didn't know what kind of security he was talking about. He just said security. So in my mind, I'm thinking mall cop, but he's like, <laughs> You know, you'll have the experience of, of, you know, managing a firearm so it'll look good. So yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. So I go in and I applied and these guys are asking me like this freaking FBI background. And I'm like, what kind of security is this, bro? Come to find out it, yeah, it was for like celebrities and like some of the most famous people in the world. So I go to this like little small uh, academy where they pepper spray me, get bit by a dog, all this crazy Jesus stuff. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And it was kind of nuts because um, at that time they don't like, you don't get hired on and then you go to the academy. It's almost like you try out, like you go through the academy and if you do well, then you get a job. Mm. And I remember, dude, I, again, reservist, which is not, it's not that serious, right? Like I hadn't deployed. I wasn't like a combat uh, job or anything like that. And I go to this academy and like, I'm like, oh, it's like, where are you from? And he's like, oh, 10 years uh, security overseas, you know, used to work for the NSA, you know, freaking CIA. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, got it. Damn. You <laughs> freaking, oh, I was deployed twice, Marine, got my arm blown off. And just, all these guys had experience and I'm like. What's your experience? Um, um, yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I went, I went. Stuff. I just go here. I wear a uniform. I mean, <laughs> you know, I was like, I'm like, damn, these guys are super more qualified than me. Um, but I've always kind of been a person where I have that chip on my shoulder and I kind of, I don't like it. But yeah. when it's there, I'm like, all right, time to perform. So luckily I got picked. I did well. Some guys didn't. And uh, I did that. That's when I moved out to LA for that job. And I started oh. off working like night shifts, uh, kind of like just residential security. So some celebrities, they have like obviously security at their house. So they have like a full man team, like be four or five people. And uh, so I started from the bottom. I started working like um, graveyards, you know, weekends, um, all that stuff. And I did that for about eight years. Shit. Yeah, eight years. Um, and I worked my way all the way to the top. Um, and during that period, I want to say like probably three years ago, um, I was a head of security for somebody. And that's when COVID was going on. Mm. And this brings me into like my business and social media. So a pivot. Yeah. And so I'm doing that. And I'd always known of social media and like TikTok. Obviously I had it, but I never like looked at it as like, oh, I want to create content. And this is still when like the Jake Pauls are still kind of coming into the picture. Yeah. Or like influencers still like such a new thing. So no one's really like, oh, I want to do that. Right. Yeah. You're just like seeing that people have videos coming out. You're like, oh, okay, cool. So then um, this is when TikTok's going crazy because of the um, pandemic. So yeah, everybody's home. Everybody's just posting videos. Yeah. And random videos of them doing challenges at home and yeah i think that that's damn actually bring that up like i think that is one of the pivots that a lot of the influencers that are out now that started you know what i mean like again we're home 
whether you have a hands-on job or remote job, but you had all the free time in the world. Mm -hmm. And again, social media has always been around, but there was Vine right before that. Yeah. Obviously, Twitter's always been big, Facebook, MySpace, all that good stuff. But now you have a form of content that is so fast with music, mm -hmm. with challenges, with people all over the world in the country. Mm -hmm. That it's like, whoa, that they're doing that one. It's my turn. Yeah. Or I gotta, I gotta redo that too. And um, wow. So from doing private security to being an influencer. So again, never, never was the aim. People, so, people think we have this plan. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. People think, right. oh, you became an influencer. Oh man, you always wanted to. I'm, no, no, I don't I, know how that comes. I've always actually steered away from it. And for the longest, I didn't really accept that. I was like, okay, this is what I do, or this is what I like doing. Because I thought people would look at me and be like, of course you want to be an influencer. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. they, they look at you and they're like, oh, you must be arrogant. You like the attention. You want to be an influencer. So I almost like purposely was like, nah, I don't, I don't, I'm not that. I don't yeah. want to get into that. Right. Um, but so during COVID, um, I was going through some stuff and I came up with the idea to start up a business. Right. And I always wanted to. I wanted to because during COVID, my company specifically, they were laying off people left and right like any other company during COVID. Security. We need a job security. And I looked at it. I'm like, wait, I remember there was this guy that I looked up to. This guy was like in the, in the Navy. He was like in a special unit. He was a, a, an instructor, fitness, uh, not a fitness instructor, a defense instructor. Mm -hmm. And they let him go just because they couldn't keep him. And he was with the company for like 10 years. Shit. So and you so kind of red flag. Boom. It was red flag. I said, wait, so you're telling me that if I give this company or any company 10 years and for any moment, just because my numbers don't match your budget anymore, you're going to let me go? Yeah. I said, oh, no, my life is worth more than that. So I was like, okay, it's time to like come up with our business. We're not going to be an employee. So then I'm looking at like, okay, well, what do we want to do? What are our interests? So I'm like, okay, fitness. Um, at that time, believe it or not, fashion was not on the top of the list at all. Like my style was... So I was like, okay, well, dressing men's wear. I was like, okay, maybe. And then I was like, cars. I was like, okay. So finally, I, I come into watches. Because I'm like, okay, what's something that nobody else is doing? Guys are coming out with t-shirts, hats, gym wear, all this stuff. And I'm yeah. like, but what's something that nobody's doing? So I was like, watches, accessories. So I was like, okay. I look into it. Um, I do some research. I'm like, okay, this is doable. So I launched that. So I launched my business. I don't know anything about business or how to start one or how to market or anything. But I know now I got to be on social media, right? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, I don't have anybody to film it. I don't have anyone to model it. And um, I don't have a following. So I guess I'm going to do everything. So at that time, I was like, okay, well, what image do I want for the brand? I want a more elevated kind of this kind of a look. So that since I'm modeling it, I have to dress a certain way. And that's how the content creation started. It wasn't because I was doing it on my personal. Busy started your business. And see, but I think that's now when people ask about like being a content creator and how to be successful you are the content mm -hmm. you are the center of attention there is brick and mortars that you don't need to be the face of it but in this day and age i feel like people need to relate to you and they need to see the person behind the brand to be yeah. like yo i i fuck with that person mm -hmm. i want to buy whatever product product he or she has and that's where it just comes with you became the model you became the tester, you became the face yeah. of your own brand. And here you go. Before we get into this, I do want to pick that brain. Mm -hmm. How do you start a business? First step. Because I like talking about it. And I know now in where we're kind of trying to pivot also is, hey, we I think we're going to do our service by giving these people the secret, which yeah. is out there in Google and YouTube and Best test trial is actually doing it, but if you could take us through what step one to and or a lesson that you had to learn really hard of, damn, I should have done this beforehand. And um, there's a lot of those. Right. <laughs> right now, there's a lot take of us. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's two sides. Though. I think there's like the logistics sides, the paperwork, okay. which, right. like you said, that's the good thing about now, which I think people, a lot of people back in the day didn't have, is that you can Google it. There's so much information that I looked up on YouTube and Google and just, okay, an LLC. Okay, what, what, what kind of an LLC do I need to start? Uh, what's the benefit of having an LLC? Like, I did all my research. Um, and I think that's something people don't really understand is, like, you have yeah. control over the information and you can self-teach yourself, which is something that a lot of people don't have access to, whether it's in different parts of the world or back in the day. But when it comes to, like, the creative aspect and the image of the brand, uh, my brand is actually really reflected on me. Yeah. So I was like, okay, who am I as a person? What do I stand for? Um, well, I'm exclusive. I, I feel like I don't let just anyone walk into my life, whether it's a, a woman or, or a man or a friend or anything. I, I'm very closed off, right? 
So it's almost like exclusivity. Yeah. So my brand, we, we don't release like um, products like you can't just go shop any time of the day. We do limited releases, kind of the model that Rolex and Nike use, right? Why? Because number one, that builds value on your products. <laughs> Um, if a customer purchases a product, they're probably more likely going to take care of that because they know it's it's limited. Yeah. Um, and also the the quality of it, right? So I was like, okay, we're going to release products that are quality, um, that are uh, they look elegant, and they're kind of elevated, but they're not, you know, this freaking triple marketed up uh, product just because I want to get profits, right? Yeah. So we wanted to deliver something that was fair, um, exclusive, and elegant, and so that's all based of who I am, right? Um, and so I think that's when you're starting a business is what kind of a service do you want to provide to people? Excellent. Right. And is it, is it reflective on you? And I, I think nine times out of 10, if you're starting a business, a hundred percent is reflective on you. Yeah. Right. It's some kind of interest that you have something that you kind of live and breathe already. And it's an extension. And I think it is important that it's like that because having a business is extremely difficult. And your attachment to it. Yeah. If you don't have that relation, like if you're just throwing out a product, whether it's a shirt, hat, sweater, and you're just kind of just doing it all oh, just because. Well, just because you're going to lose it, mm -hmm. just because it's going to fall off whenever it's not giving you the payback that you anticipated. Yeah. But when you live and breathe and don't and lose sleep over this idea, product, brand, whatever you're doing, well, nine times out of 10, it's going to become successful. Yeah. But what a lot of people just don't understand, it's you don't know the time frame that it's going to be in. Yeah. It might be in six months. It might be in a month. It might be in a year or two or it might be like us three years in. Mm hmm. Here, here's the byproduct, all the work, all the posts, the consistency. Yeah. Now you're seeing the byproduct. Oh man, you guys got so, yeah, but it took literally another hundred and something episodes to even see what this looks like. Yeah. And having a product again, if you're going to allow us to wear your product, it has to be quality. Yeah. You know, you don't want somebody to have your product any parts of the world and then to be like, whoa, like, this is a representation of Jay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know about that. Boom. Yeah. So I'm sure that comes with a lot of sleepless nights of how to, where do, where do I get them done? Yeah. The look, when to post the creativity. And I mean, to not even like, not talk about the, the influence that you have also in the social media world, mm -hmm. brand deals. Yeah. Besides your product that you're also doing really good. You also got the looks of brand deals that are not small. Mm -hmm. I just seen you at the Alley Auto show not too long ago. <laughs> so that that whole thing is insane because again, so when I started promoting my brand, right? And and just the the the, the part that you said about sleep the nights, yeah. that kind of hit right now. Cause Jesus Christ, man, there's some nights where and it wasn't because I stayed up thinking about like, of course, you're thinking of like, okay, what, what else can I do for the brand? It was more of like the fear of failure. It's like mm. you're, you're, you're launching out to do something. And because yeah. I'm not, I talk about it all the time. I'm like, I'm actually, people think maybe on social media that I'm the most confident guy, you know, that this guy, oh, it's, you know, no, bro, I have a lot of self doubt sometimes. And I'm doing a lot better now. Like, but earlier this year, absolutely not. Yeah. And so at this time when I was launching this brand, I was looking at 10,000 ways this was going to fail. Mm. I'm like, people are probably thinking, you know, who's this guy think he is? What do you know about watches? First of all, what do you know about business? Like, and at that time I didn't have influence. So you talk about influence now. Well, at that time I was nobody. Yeah. I had maybe what 400 followers on my IG. That was it. So I'm promoting it to 400 people that are all close family and friends. That's crazy. And so I'm thinking at the time I'm launching this luxury brand or this, you know, watch brand that's supposed to be. And being know, a nobody. And nobody. And so I'm thinking like everyone probably thinks I'm an idiot. Like everyone thinks I'm going to fail. I probably am going to fail. And it just, it would keep me up at night. I'm like, I probably look so stupid right now, but I would still wake up the next morning and do it. So how do you overcome that? How do you over, uh, overcome that insecurity of, man, this may not work and I may not, no one may believe in me, but I got to still show up. I think it's like what you just said. You, like, it's not, because I, I realized at the time that it wasn't up to everybody else to believe it, mm. right? Uh, especially family and friends. I think that's one part of business that people don't understand yeah. is that your closest friends are the ones that are probably not going to support you and your family and friends. Those are the people that are probably going to look at you and be like, that's really cute. And when they ask about it, they're like, hey, how's that little thing going, by the way? How's, how's, is that, oh, you're still doing that? It's yeah. like, oh, that's dope. And then they'll like say that for a second and they'll be like, and what else are you doing though? Like, okay, that's cute, but what are you actually doing? Yeah, like what are, what are you really doing yeah. that's supporting you right now? Yeah, and, and you know, like my mom would tell me, she's like, this is great. I love that you're doing this. This is so amazing. But when this doesn't work out, and I was like, 
mom, that I, I don't know what even I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. She's like, I'm just saying, I said, no, mom, that doesn't exist in my vocabulary. There, there is no, is this not going to work out? It's when it's going to work out. Yeah. And she'd be like, I just don't want you to, I'm like, I understand where you're coming from. I'm like, but, and so I think people don't understand that about business is like, everyone thinks like, oh, my family and friends are going to be the first one to line up. No, those are the ones that you have to prove it harder to Yeah. because they've seen you grow up, you know, or they've seen you back in the day when you weren't who you are now versus a stranger who, whoever you're projecting like, oh, wow, this guy's a business owner yeah. or he has a podcast. Wow. This guy's amazing. <clears throat> Your family and friends don't view you that way. Yeah. And so that would keep me up. And, but to now go, to go back to the brand deals, that kind of happened out of the blue, you know, and, and it actually didn't happen because of IG. That was kind of its own separate thing. Mm. I had, I never had a TikTok. And so again, uh, pandemic happens. Um, and, uh, my, one of my cousins actually told me, she's like, you should get on TikTok and promote your brand. I was like, Oh dude, I'm already having enough work. You know, I had a day, I had a nine to five and I'm doing this, you know, side business. I'm like, I have enough with so that. Man. I'm like, I don't want to have another platform that I have to now like promote on. Yeah. And one day I was like, having some wine i'm drunk and i'm like you know what Fuck it. i'm just gonna get on tiktok and so i downloaded and i and i first again i started the brand first yeah and so i'm doing it but uh, but by being on tiktok i start seeing all the content that's being put out and i'm like dude this is actually hilarious like these people are doing some funny shit and so um i was going through something super rough at the time and so i'm like you know what whatever i'm, I'm gonna download it you know see what's up and i think i started off with like 50 followers so imagine you have 50 followers. You don't care about the content you're putting out, right? Yeah. So I'm putting out whatever. I think it was around this time too, the holiday season. So I'm putting out content about like the tias asking you y la novia, you know. So people are relating to that. They're like, oh my God, I know what that feels like. <laughs> um, you know, talking about el burrito sabanero, <laughs> like bumping it around this time. So I'm doing content like that. Everything's going cool. And then, um, so I'm getting some views here and there. And I'm like, okay, cool. Again, I didn't care about it. I was just doing it for fun and kind of for self-therapy. And then this trend comes around. I don't know if you remember it. That one song, um, Toxic, by that one guy. I forgot his name is. Long hair, wears glasses. Oh, man. You're so toxic. Or something like that, right? So it's a trend. And, and everyone's putting captions that are like, you can tell it's like they're, they're, they're lying about that. But they're <laughs> putting toxic things that they do. So I think, I'm like, oh, how funny would it be if I do that trend, right? So it's like 6 a.m. in the morning. I'm doing security. I got like these bags under my eyes. Granted, I do have a lot of wrinkles. We know we need Botox, by the way. I, you guys are going to point that out. Um, I'm going to TJ next week. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you guys know anybody, put it in the comments. Yes, some doctors. Yeah. We're all taking a trip to TJ. Yeah. Chris, you know? You know, BBL would look good on me. <laughs> and so, um, so I do this trend, right? And I put it in, in the caption. Um, Starting a talking phase, knowing damn well I'm not interested, right? Oh, now that's not that toxic. It's not. It's. I mean, that's maybe a serious topic, right? <laughs> We're gonna get into that. Yeah, we'll get into this. <laughs> so I do this trend, right? And it went insane, and not for a good reason. At first, it was funny for some people. They were like, "Oh, this is ha ha ha!" Like, yeah. And then, really, and then and the then, bad ones come in. And then the TikTok people from the back came in. The Gen Zs. They came in, they're like, you old, you know, this is and that. How are you still playing these games at your old age? And I'm like, <laughs> Jesus. No, no, no. But what got what made it went viral was someone came in there and it was simple. She didn't, she didn't go too hard. She didn't go too crazy. She was just like, at your fossil age. And that was it. It went insane. Everyone was going to the comments. It went viral. It got like seven million views on TikTok because people were like, um, what's it called? They were stitching it. And all these girls are going in on me like, these freaking men. So now I look like I'm a piece of shit when really I'm like this hopeless romantic guy. And I was like, guys, it was just a trend. I was just kidding. Stop. I had 50 Jeez. followers. And now people are going crazy on me. I got people, it's going crazy on Instagram because now they're posting on Instagram and they're going in on me. It's going, they're going in on me on Twitter. I had people from high school be like, hey, bro, is this you? Like everywhere. And that's how I got my following, actually. It was because I went viral for the wrong reasons. Yeah. And then like. They just, after that, it like, I think some time went by and it was like for a week, bro. My, my, my TikTok was going insane with like hate and comments. Man, for people to understand is like, <clears throat> you get one viral video and just being on social media in general, you're going to be exposed to everybody and anyone. Mm -hmm. You're up for grabs for anybody to have a, a opinion, anybody to have a voice on your life and anybody to have a hey, but you should do this or talk whatever mess that they want to say because yeah. of whatever they're going through, whatever they feel like they could say. But that's the thing that uh, we people need to understand that on social media, you have to be mindful of the content you put out, mm -hmm. but also 
be ready for the backlash that you may get. You may understand my content, but the person over there may see it a whole other way, and yeah. they're and that's okay. But I got to be ready for whatever comment that comes with them. And it's like, hey, it's okay. It's social media. It's content. It's going to, for everybody and for anyone. Yeah. It's just, it may not be for everybody. So when that happened, I, when that was like my first lesson of life in social media, like, oh, anybody can see this. Because I had 50 followers. You think yeah. I cared? I'm like, ah, just, you know, and I know all of them. I'm like, they're going to understand it. Now you have, you know, 7 million people that don't know yeah. you. That are like, oh, this guy's a piece of shit. Yeah, no, it's and and so that week, dude, I, I remember I was like, I couldn't sleep. I was just looking at the comments. <laughs> That's when I that first happened to me, yeah. right? And you never think about it again because I'm not trying to get into this space. I'm just doing it for fun. Yeah. So you're never thinking like, hey, am I gonna be ready for the, the hateful comments? How am I gonna take that? It's so crazy when you go into something for fun and be like, wait, but yeah, if this is fun and it went serious, all right, what if I take this serious now? Yeah. And again, sky is the limit. Yeah. Sky is a limit on social media because you can, um, I'm a literally walking testimony to this from 48,000 followers of all the tias commenting on the videos and posting now to literally a one week full of content posting that now took me to almost 90,000 followers yeah. in two months. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, like know what you're posting but again there's there you have there's a design audience for you yeah and whether it's in your business whether it's in your personal whether it's be mindful of the content you're putting out and know what what's the community that you're trying to build because i've seen people have 700,000 followers 600,000 500,000 but their community is not behind them yeah they just like the videos but when they have a product yeah. Uh, nothing's coming out. Well, and that's when I had that moment that was going on. I had to have that conversation. I was like, okay, okay, this is serious now. Like, yeah. clearly, if whatever you put out now can't be seen by a lot of people. And I was like, I, now I had to think about, like, what image do I want to put out? What kind of content do I want to put out? Are we going to take yeah. this seriously? And more importantly, are we going to care about the reception that people are going to have to it? Yeah. And that's when the shit happened. And after that, dude, that's when I started taking social media more seriously. In terms of the content, yeah. again, I still didn't want to do it. But then little by little, like, I think it was shifting. It started shifting. I got like one email that was like, hey, do you want to, um, we'll give you this product if you post a video. And I was like, wait, what? Really? I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Yeah. And after that, you know, fast forward little by little, you know, brands started coming in. Child and error, man. I think that's the, that's definitely one of the things that it's going to be your best teacher in life is if you have an idea, you have a dream, you have a vision, go out and try it. It may, it may work, it may not work, but the only way you're going to ever find out is if you actually go and do it. You know, how you, to sum up what you were saying, you're going to have other people that doubt you, that don't believe in the vision, don't believe in what you're doing, don't believe in the product that you have or in the content you're putting out. But at the end of the day, the only person that ever needs to believe in it is you. Yeah. They're the only, you're the only person that's going to have full control of your life. But if you allow yourself to be, controlled by everybody else's opinions then you're gonna live your life in regret of man what if i would have done this mm. a year ago six months ago or now that person has that same idea that i had and they're so successful and i'm here just talking about uh like how the old people do right yeah oh you know i i could have done it yeah but unfortunately i didn't yeah. and it's like no we live in a world where we can do it yeah what's what's the worst that ever gonna happen you fail it is what it is like just get back up but so why do you think people don't um, necessarily jump into things and just start things? Cause I feel like a lot of people, they, they always talk about like, oh, man, I wish I could do this or I want to do this. Why do you think what, what do you what holds people back? One, I believe the fear of them failing mm -hmm. and them thinking they're not good enough mm -hmm. and they're not capable of doing it. And then two, the group that yeah. they're around. Mm -hmm. If I'm around people that are not go getters, I'm going to be the next one. Yeah. You know, everybody has a dream of starting a brand, starting having a product, whether it's a shirt, whether it's a hat, whether it's jewelry or even starting a YouTube channel. But if you have people that are not around wanting to build that every single day, well, after a month, your fuel is going to run out. Let's yeah. not let's not be naive to this idea of motivation. Mm -hmm. It runs out. Yeah. You get tired. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the whole waking up and let's go. Oh, man, I get tired. I'm sleepy. Yeah. I'm trying to catch up on sleep. Today's not my day, but I got to show up still. Because yeah. if I don't show up on a Monday, then where am I? Like, I, I, there was only one instance where 
I didn't post on a Monday and Tuesday because of losing a family member. And all I got was literally one of my closest friends. I didn't post that week. He's like, ¿Qué te pasa? I was like, what do you mean? I was like, dude, like, I'm going. He's like, ¿Qué tiene? You need to show up. Yeah. I was like, tú eres esta persona. Siempre lo has sido. Ponte las pilas. Yeah. People depend on you. Yeah. People want to see what you're doing. People are waiting for your message. You owe it to yourself to show up for yourself. So what the fuck are you doing? Mm-hmm. Feeling bad, sitting in sorrow, and no, that's not your option. I was like, oh. That's because a lot of people uh, operate based off their feelings. Yeah. And I think right now, especially, um, maybe, I mean, people can view this differently, but I feel like we've got lost in this thing where it's like we've overcorrected it. Because back in the day, right, in the, the old timers, like you said, yeah, they obviously never operated on feeling ever. Right? Never. Um, that's why we have so many generational traumas, right? Because especially in Latino like culture, like our parents never, our dads, they never showed us any kind of love, affection. They, they were never in touch with their emotions. Now I feel like we're in a time where maybe we've overcorrected. I feel like some people are so into their feelings yeah. that it's like, well, I didn't feel like doing this Ooh. or I didn't, f- you know, well, it could be in, in any context, yeah. by the way, it can be in your dream. Oh, I just, I, I it didn't feel fun anymore. I just, I, I, I had all this fear or you're in marriage. I didn't feel the love anymore. And people don't have that commitment, right? I think that's the, the key word, right? Yeah. And going back to what you said earlier about like, well, what did you think about your business when you started it? I told myself, if we're going to start this, we're not done until it's until it's where we want it to be. Excellent. There's not going to be like, dang, we tried it for five years. You know, um, it didn't work out. I guess it is not going to work out. I'm a firm believer that anything you want to do in this life, you can do it. It's just a matter of time. When did you believe that, though? I had to make that agreement with myself. Mm. I said, if we start this, because you actually look, see, everyone's scared about the beginning. Yeah. And I think the sooner you accept that when you start something, you're not going to feel ready. Again, being based off of feeling, right? I feel ready to do this. Yeah. I, I feel capable. I, I feel like I know everything. You don't. Yeah. So if you uh, wait until you feel like you're ready, you're never going to start. But yeah. if you just get started, you're going to go through trial and error. And that's what it is. Mm-hmm. None of us have anything about this life figured out. Yeah. I don't care how old you are. And so... I made that commitment, right? And I think that's what people lack is I was like, when we start this, we're going to look more stupid if we quit than if we just keep trying to figure it out, yeah. right? And so for me, Facts. it was like, I'm burning the boats, right? There's this there's, there's old um, story about, um, I believe it's a Spanish commander. They were trying to take over, I'm not sure if it was the Aztecs or who it was, but they're trying to take over this land. And he noticed that his soldiers were all getting unmotivated, right? And so they had the ships that they came in. He secretly burned them all. And so all his soldiers were like, what are you doing? Like, that's how we're going to get home. He said, no, we're going to get home. But the way we're getting home is through their ships. He said, so if you want to take over this land, if you want to get back home, we have to take over this land. Now, mind you, they were outnumbered. They were already tired. And so guess what those soldiers did? They took over the land. And so what that basically means is burn your boats, burn your plan B. If you have a goal, if you have whatever you want to do, burn your boats because there is no plan B. And if there is a plan B, then you actually don't really want this as much as you say you do. You're already, right. you're already anticipating you're going to fail. Yeah. Yeah, th- I felt the same way. We recorded episode one and went to episode two, and my thing was the same way. Man, if I don't come out with another one, people are going to be like, oh, you see, I told you. Yeah. I told you we're going to do it. Or, ah, you see, just another idea. So episode one through 25 was I'm making my statement. Mm-hmm. 25 to 50 was, hey, I'm still here. Mm-hmm. And now everything we're doing is like, hey, we've been this. Yeah, it's just the hardest part was the hardest part wasn't starting. The hardest part was maintaining. Yeah, it's in the middle of the whole journey of man. So it's not giving me the return that I've anticipated. I'm a social media person and I'm not getting paid. So I'm maintaining this dream by my regular job. How does this work? Yeah. Like, oh, you work. Dude, I thought you just pop. No, bro, I work three other jobs. Yeah. Why do you? Because I actually love them. Yeah. Point blank. I'm not doing anything in this life that I don't love anymore. If it's for me and I love to do it, I'm going to show up and do it. But if it's not, I'm not. Like, it's easy, bro. And you know what's funny is actually in that process, you're actually trying to prove it to yourself more than you are to others. Yeah, there's no way I need to prove it to anybody no more. Yeah. There's there's any... If you say, I'm trying to prove it to so-and-so person, you're lying to yourself. Yeah. Why? Why are you trying to prove it to them so much? Even if it's your parents. Your parents just want you to do good. Prove it to yourself that you can actually are capable of, capable of doing this. Mm-hmm. Nobody else. Your parents are going to love you whether you have a nine to five or your business. Mm-hmm. As long as you're good. Yeah. Prove it to yourself that you created something and you took it out of from the ground. up. You said earlier that your mom didn't believe in completely what you're doing. And we understand where that comes from. But now 
do you believe it? Do you believe in you that you're capable of that and then some? I don't. I, I, I don't think there's anything I can't do now. Mm. But see, that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's actually you're trying to prove it to yourself. You think you're trying to prove it to other people. Yeah. But so, pe- the doubts that people have and the things that they say, yeah. they actually don't really matter as much unless you already believe that about yourself. Mm-hmm. So if you have someone who's saying something hateful about you or, or some some doubts, it's only true because you also believe it and you have that fear. Yeah. And so early on, I, I had those fears already myself. Like, and so when someone said something or did something that confirmed that, it was just confirming what I already felt. Yeah. But after some time, I was like, wait, hold on. And this goes into kind of like self-confidence. I had to really look back and be like, wait, what kind of a person are we though? Yeah. Right? Because again, I started my business. It wasn't going well. I mean, we're on year four. It's barely now picking up. Right? We're talking about thousands of dollars invested into something that you knew nothing about. And you create this false expectation that like, I'm going to create, come up with a great product. Yeah. And this, this is going to be great. And everyone's going to love it. I'm going to work so hard because I work so hard and everyone loves me. They're going to support it. Yeah. And then you come out with this and it flops. And that's when life's like, so what? Did you really want this? Or was it just all the hype? Yeah. And so I was like, oh, damn. And so when I was, you know, so there's that side, right? Then we start doing social media and social media is going terrible. And then now I left my job to pursue social media full time. And everyone's looking at me like, what are you doing? How so, stupid are you? How stupid are you? What are you? I yeah. mean, I left a six figure paying job. You know what I mean? Like where I'm. You tra- ruined your life. We're driving Rolls Royces and private jets. And now you're at home. What? Making TikTok videos? Huh? You know what I mean? And so yeah. now you're faced with all, and again, but none of that matters when people are saying that unless yeah. it's already there. And, and isn't it so crazy that you can have a great idea, you can have the best vision, and the only thing people care about, and I was talking to my guy Jose yesterday, the only thing people care about now is what car do you drive? Mm-hmm. What kind of shoes you wear? What kind of clothing you wear? Where do you go eat? Where do you travel to? And if you're not doing any of those things at the highest capacity, you're a failure. Yeah. It's like, whoa. Why, why do I need to prove it to you what I can do and what I'm capable of doing? Like, It's so crazy you say that because I was just thinking about this on the way here. I was like, and half those people don't even know why they want those things. Yeah. Like, now, you- like yeah, when we got to show out, we show out. Yeah. But I love my Target sweater that was $15. I love it. No, but. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, but you have people that are like, yeah, man, I got this, like, you know, this this BMW, this Lambo. Da, da, da. Who, why did you get a Lambo? Yeah. Why did you get that Rolex? Is it because you actually know about Rolex's heritage and, and you the, the quality and why they, or because society told you that if you have that, yeah. you're somebody. Yeah. And really you're craving to be somebody and be accepted by everybody else because you don't feel enough. So you're trying to cover it up with designer and all these expensive things. Yeah. So why do you really want that stuff? And no one asked that. Right. And now you're filled with people who, you know, men. And, and I think that's why it's so important. Like you said, the content that we put out and the example that we're putting out, yep. because now you and I, even though I mean, we're still young, right? I'm 30. You're 28 and 28. 28. Right. But we're still young, yeah. right? But there is a younger generation below us that because of our fall and they see what we do and how we interact, yeah. that's going to follow our lead, right? So if we're kind of sending out that same message that, oh, to be a man is to, you know, have the women, have the designer and have this and have nice that. Car, yeah. Some men don't have that aspiration. Yeah. And it, it, it trial and error. Yeah. It's all it is. The, the trial of, oh, this is, this is successful. Having ever having a room full of twenty people that don't give a fuck if you are feeling good or not, yeah. have a full of twenty people that don't give a shit how you're feeling Monday through Friday, but only care about what are we doing this Saturday? Where are we going out? Where are we partying at? What's included? Yeah. Well, what if this week I don't got it that way? Yeah. What if this week we have to put the groundwork in and we got to work? Are you willing to do it, or are you only willing to show up when we have the result? Because if you're not willing to put your hands in the dirt and work with this, then don't come all dressed up nice on a Saturday night, ready to enjoy our hard work. Not even that, but what about when you're not emotionally there to even do that? Mm. What Maybe. about when you, when you take a break and no, you're not answering nobody who checks in? Exactly. Oh bro, it's been a while. Yeah. You didn't notice. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I just felt like you were busy. So I left you alone. Actually, I needed you there. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Like, so, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Real value in life, right? What, what is it? Because yeah. all those people, like, I, I just, I, I, have a, I have a very tiny, I can put you on my hand how many people I have in my life. And I do that for a reason because those people shape what I do. They do, yeah. right? We're all influenced by the, the circle that we have. Yeah. And um, those few people, I, I need to know who I can count on. Yeah. All right? And like you said, there are some people that are the Saturday night people, right? And it's not bad to say that you can have some people that, hey, if I go out, I know that person will show up, it'll be a great time. Yeah. But you got to have some people that, when you can't show up for yourself and get out of bed, 
Yeah. That like, they're gonna give you those words to be like, "Hey, how you doing?" That's real world. I heard a um, Tyler Perry man, and I, I love listening to him. And he had an analogy of, you know, people are like trees, right? You have the people that are leaves, that any little shake they fall off. It's mm-hmm. a season; they fall off through seasons, right? You go through summer, you go through spring, autumn, everything. There's people that are leaves; they're gonna fall off, and you can't be mad at them. They're just not. They cannot maintain that type of environment. Then you have people that are the branches. You can lean on them a little bit, but if you step a little too far out, they're going to break and fall. Mm -hmm. And that goes with life. You know, you're going to go through seasons and moments where shit might get a little too tough that they can't survive this or can't withhold everything that's happening and they fall off and it's okay. Mm -hmm. But then you have the people that are like roots Mm -hmm. that are there through everything and helping you build not, not your business, your life. And you're expanding together. You're building that foundation. The biggest thing is the foundation. Mm -hmm. And you cannot be mad of everybody's role. There's some people that are leaves, some people that are branches. And then there's the actual people that are roots. When I needed somebody who checked in on me, well, I could tell you this, this, this person checked in. Oh, well, what about? It's okay. Like, I don't blame you. It's just I know the relationship that I have. Uh, The comedian Ralph Balbosa, he has said, um, I'm a lot of people's best friends. But I have very few best friends. And that's it. Like, I'm your best friend. Why? Why am I your best friend? Can you tell me why am I your friend? Yeah. And I don't know how that conversation may go with, oh, well, yeah, it's because we hang out, bro. And we go to, yeah, but what about, how are you? Yeah. Are you good? Oh, well, you only hit me up because where? Because I hang out with cool people or go places. What about other than that? Yeah. Like, how's your family? You know, who, who can you? Who can you count on your hand that actually checks in and not just you, but hey, how's your family? How's your mom? How's your dad? How's work going? How are you feeling Monday through Friday, one to ten? One being the worst, ten being the best. How are you feeling mentally, physically, and emotionally? Do you care about that or do you only care about, hey, for what what bar are we going to this week? Where are we celebrating? Yeah. Well, how was your year actually? Was it good? Was it not? So it's just like there's all these different ways to c- classify friends and relationships romantic and and non-romantic but it's just are you willing and ready to realize everything that is coming like if you realize that these persons are in your life for only this you're not going to be ready to let go of that person because that means you're living life now without them but i promise you as soon as you figure out that category where everybody's at you live a better life yeah a more peaceful life because now i can't be mad at you for not showing up when i knew you were never going to show up right i just i expected you to yeah. and now you did it and now i'm here mad and mad at you for not coming and but the better question is i think sometimes i ask yourself why do you associate yourself with those people yeah. not even so much them but why are you keep going why with do you keep going people? back why, right because birds of a feather flock together right so do you yeah. associate yourself with those people like yeah. maybe it's not even them. maybe you're the problem not you specifically, right? <laughs> I think uh, we had a, a moment now. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but I like, am. I'm the problem for I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is actually a therapy session. We're having an intervention. Uh, <laughs> let me start calling them right now. <laughs> let me let me start blocking people right now really quick. Hey, why did you unfollow me? <laughs> I had a podcast and I realized a lot of my... <laughs> no, but it's true, right? But I'm right? back. Right. <laughs> hey, but what are you doing this Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> sorry um there was a glitch on my instagram and i accidentally unfollowed you oh, but God. here so i am i've said that so many times why'd you unfollow me i didn't even realize i did i'm so sorry dude ig it just acts up it, every now yeah, and then and- i i was going to, i was unfollowing some people and i think you were right below them i'm so sorry here follow me <laughs> and then i follow them again <laughs> damn that glitch it just had they haven't fixed it i've, I've complained to instagram nah it, it it's um I love that. I love that you said that. Why are you in that circle? No, I mean, again, we're all we're all mature enough to understand what is for us and what isn't for us. Mm-hmm. What is beneficial to us and what is not beneficial to our life. And I'm not I'm not talking money or opportunities. It's just like, yo, like, are the people you're giving energy to? Are those the right people that will reciprocate that energy back to you? If they're not giving you a little bit of what you're giving them, why are you still there? I might, I might challenge that even more. What I would ask, are you giving so you can get back? Mm. Because a lot of times you give something because you're like, if I do this, they're going to do this back to me. You want, you want the return. It's like um, when people give out money, when people, you know, there's always, unfortunately, there's situations you got to, 
hey, can you help me out? I'm going to give you because I know I'm going to get it back. Yeah. What if you don't get it back? Yeah. Or like I did this for you because I expect you to do it back for me. Yeah. Let's say that could be in a relationship. It could be in a friendship. Like, but bro, the other day, you know, I did that for you. Yeah. So in reality, you never did it out of your heart. You never did it because you wanted to. It's just you wanted the return. You expected it. You want this right back. Yeah. So it's transactional. And yeah. who wants a relationship that's transactional? A lot of people. And then you question yourself, why is that okay for you? Yeah, and then they hit they hit that point of their life of why didn't this work or why isn't it not working? Well, what's the base of this relationship? How did it start off? What conversations are you having? You know, and and it, and again, it goes through a lot of a lot of things. Ask yourself when you hang out with your friends, when do you talk to them mm-hmm. on a Friday before Saturday night or on a Thursday before the weekend coming in, or do you do your mon- your weekly check ins Monday or Sundays? I went through a time where I had to really evaluate all of my friends and be like, you have no depth. You see, I, I, I can't keep um, people who are just associates. Mm-hmm. I, I can't. Because yeah. my goal in life right now is so big that I don't, like, for me personally, um, I don't view going out as a thing that I should even be doing right now. Yeah. To me, it's like, what, what the fuck am I celebrating? Like, I, I'm chasing legendary status. I'm chasing this huge dream that I have. Why? What am I celebrating? What am I, like... There's going to be times, of course, but going out every weekend, why would I do that? Yeah. You know what I mean? And then so I evaluated my friends and I was like, okay, which one of you can I go to and really count on who has depth? Yeah. And bro, I cut people off. Mm-hmm. I, and I, I, to this day, this is, this is not like a gym membership where you just monthly, you know, you get monthly access. You know what I mean? This is a renewal, right? This is rent, <laughs> baby. Every month we got to figure out like, is this still going the way it is? Because yeah. brother, at this age and what you're chasing, your time is so valuable. Oh man. I feel like that's when it comes to like what is really valuable in our lives yeah. time. Like I sometimes feel like I have no time for anything and we can't get it back. No. And so it's like, am I really going to waste my time? Whether it's with a woman, whether it's with a friend, it's like, am I really going to waste my time with this person that I know there's no benefit here? And am I going to waste your time? Yeah. That that's the time you can never get it back. No. You're the only thing you can ever get after that is the reflection of it. Oh, well, and why did I even do that? Well, why did you? Yeah. Again, we're we're not naive to the repercussions of everything. I know if I go to this place, I know what could happen. I know all the outcomes. But if you know the outcomes and you still went and now you're still complaining, why did you even go in the first place? If you went with this person or you gave your time to this person, but you knew exactly all the outcomes that can possibly happen, why in the hell did you still go in and do it? Because some people like playing the victim. Mm. But... <laughs> Sorry, am I, am I, am I, if we shot him <sighs> over here? <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it, some it, people like playing the victim because it's, it's so much better for me to go to people or to tell myself the sob story. I don't even have to tell people. I want to tell myself, wow, like, how could they do that to me? You knew they were going to do that. Yeah. But then they want to tell others, like, the, their version and, yeah. like, didn't you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But now, like, no, no, no. What do you mean you're shocked that she left you for another dude? She, like, follows all these ball players and is out at the club and hugs every security guard at the club. What do you mean you didn't know? What do you, what do you mean? She, she was always going to sleep after 7. What do you mean you didn't know? What are we talking about? You know what I mean? Like, Location uh, went off. What happened? What do you mean? She told you he was his, her best friend? What? You, what do you mean you, you didn't know? You believed that. What is, what is she Steve Harvey? season tickets to Lakers and you th- <laughs> she knew somebody? What? Who did you think she knew? Come on now. We knew it. We knew it. <laughs> what did Steve Harvey said? He's like, when a girl has a guy best friend, it's just a guy that's waiting for his opportunity to come 100%. in. 100%. No, but hold on, hold on. I will say this. I will say this. Hold on, pause. I did, I did firmly used to believe that. I did firmly used to believe that. And I can strongly say that I have women who are platonic friends and it was actually a woman who told me that because I, I used to argue that all the time i'd be like no men and women cannot be friends like there's no way like the man or the woman is always just waiting for the turn yeah and i remember my friend uh she told me she was like um if you as a man cannot have a woman platonically as a friend you have a problem because you have Ooh. no self-control Back. she's like and you as a man have an issue and yeah. you should really check it. it's a red flag and it's true. Like yeah. after that, I was like, you know what? Yeah. Like, and I can honestly say I have friends that strictly always been platonic. Yeah. So, but I will it's, say it's very rare. <laughs> it's not common. It, it's, it's, it's hard. Possible. It's hard for people to understand the relationship. And I always say, Hey, come around, find out. Like it's really, uh, who said yesterday you can't. 
Are you? I feel like there's a backstory here. There is. I think so. <laughs> Like someone that. someone said yesterday you cannot shit where you eat. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. So it's just like, bro, especially in business, business got to stay on business. Hundred percent. Um, but do you feel like you can platonically be, be friends with the girl? Yeah, I have them. Yeah, I have my, I have one of two of my best friends, uh, Genesis and Ashley, and it's it's just that. Like, and why do you feel like it's beneficial to have them as best friends for you as a man? For me as a man, I. Th- I from learning, definitely, is having a balance on how I am, right? Like, actually, especially in what we do is, as podcasts, as I feel like I'm always right. And I'm like, oh, if, if Pepe looks at me and <laughs> if I tell them, they're probably going to agree with me in some sort of way. But, again, like, I have, I have my daughter and I have my sisters. So I got to look at things also how it makes them feel in any sort of way. Yeah. Having my girl best friends is just, for me, it's a balance. I got my guys that are my, my shooters with me, but then I got the ones like, Hey, wait, that's us. Yeah. Hey, maybe what you're saying isn't, I'm like, Oh, okay. I also feel like having a a woman as a friend that was a cheat code. Cause if you come up with a situation, let's say you're dating a girl and you're like, Hey, this, she'll tell you exactly what they're doing. Like, nah, bro. She's, she's trying to get something out of you. Or she's playing you. We, we know exactly what it is. Nah, she's not, bro. She just... She, <laughs> she really she, fell asleep, bro. It's 7 p.m. And she's had a long week. She works at Starbucks and you know, she's, she's trying been, to be a model. You know, she's just busy every every day and every... Uh, like, she doesn't answer her phone. I don't know why. She, but. Just, she says she doesn't like texting. <laughs> she just doesn't like phone calls, so she texts me. But she says but she's always on Instagram. It's just that's faster for her, bro. Wait, this is coming from somewhere. <laughs> I know, right? I definitely experienced it at one point in my life. Trust me. <laughs> no, but... Um, All right, so now what What does a friend... How do you categorize a friend? What? Uh, what? How do you categorize it? I think it, it, it definitely... Pause. No, no, you're good, you're good. Um, I think for me now, I evaluate um, the people that I'm going to consider friends is where are you going and are we going the same place, number one, right? Because... You know, and I'm, I'm speaking more in terms of value and character. Yeah. Because, if, for example, if you're kind of just living life, kind of letting hit you, uh, that's not going to work for me because I have a direct goal where we're going. And I want to be able to sh- iron sharpen iron, right? Nice. So um, that's number one. Number two, who you are, who are you? Especially as a man, yeah. I got to see where your value system is, especially living in L.A., um, being involved in social media. Yeah. There's a lot of alternative motives. So I got. I have to believe that your friendship is going to be something that's actually valid and tangible, has some depth. But yeah. if I, for a second, feel like there's a false image that you're giving me, you're done. Oh, oh, I, I don't play that. Yeah, because I've been in situations like you said where you knew it was coming, you knew that person was like this, and then a situation happens and you're like, "Fuck, right? I should have known better." And so now I'm very protective. Because here's the reality. Your peace and your joy is the one thing that is yours that you can choose who you give and who you don't. And it's the one thing that you can protect. And so the people that I have around me are going to affect that. And so I do have to vet you very well to see whether you're potentially going to affect that. Yeah. Right. And that's what matters to me. I don't care what you're into. You could be, I, I'm, I believe in God, right? I'm, I fear God. You could be a satanic and I, I, I rock with you. I'm not going to agree with everything you do. But if you bring love to my table, you're always going to have a seat. But the moment I feel like at some point you're going to sit here and be a Judas, I can't fuck with you. And I, and I, I do that very quickly. And with five minutes, I can tell if someone's like, not cool. Yeah. I'm going to keep it cordial. I'm not going to be a dick or nothing like that. But I'm gonna be like, you're someone I keep over there. Yeah. Instead of getting a hug, here's your handshake. Yeah. You hey, how you doing? That's great. Hey, I'll be right back, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be honest. So if you're ever one of those people, just know hey, you, you might be a Judas. It's, I'm, I'm a big person on your f- initial interaction is what categorizes how that relationship is going to go. If you're going, I mean, just regular handshakes, everybody. But for me, it's, I got to hug you. I got to see where like your energy, where it's coming from. I got to see like, Hey, we're good. Because realistically there is people that in, in this world, this society that they're going to play the role of I'm a good person. Oh, and then you get the real colors of it. And Oh no. It wasn't that. Oh, you pretended to be that. So now, again, I'm protecting my peace. The The table that we sit at, I'm, it's protected. Mm-hmm. And as soon as whatever, as soon as it has to be questioned why you're here, yeah, 
Yeah. Hey, here's your plate to go. Take it. <laughs> well, go and on it, to and next. it just doesn't lie. Yeah. Oh, no. And I, I, that's one lesson I've learned in life that I don't care what you're telling me. That's all great. What is it? Uh, believe, believe none of what you hear and half of what you see. Energy is everything. Yeah. So you can tell me, oh, man, I rock with you. You're my boy. This, believe it or not, just how the women or a man can love bomb you, friends can love bomb you, too. Yeah. Oh, man, you my guy, bro. You, I, I rock with you so heavy. Da, da, da. Hold on. I, we just Boom. met. Yeah. What do you mean you rock with me? You don't know nothing about me. Yeah. What are you talking about? And and I, I generally feel like there's some that do stand by, by, by what they say. But let's play devil's advocate. When it's time to... to that gets tested in some way, shape, or form. The whole, hey, dog, how you doing? Now gets sent, hey, bro, what's up? Yeah. See you later. Like, oh, whoa. Weren't when no one was around, weren't you this way? Yeah. But now that everybody's around and looking, now you're this way? How about we just, we're good now. Yeah. This is gonna this is gonna go on the Patreon. So if you want to hear the tea, you gotta go pay for this shit. Fuck it. <laughs> don't mind my don't mind the feed pics that were posted on there, but <laughs> Top pelos. <laughs> We <laughs> <laughs> athletes, but <laughs> I seen some shit. <laughs> you know, I have my model over there, Jose, with the three quarter shorts and shit, <laughs> squatting. <laughs> He's squatting in the Santa hat. So, <laughs> oh, we love it here. <laughs> oh shit, man! So, if you can, if you can sum it up really quick for us, God damn, what? <laughs> I got 10 kids and three baby mamas with this drink. God damn. <laughs> so strong. How many, per, how, many, how many per baby mama? This is Patreon, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, we got to pay, pay for that. We got to pay for that. Exclusive. Pay for that All right. Your, what is your definition of true love? Oh, damn. Shit. Yeah. There it is. Uh, here it is. There it is. There it is. He dropped it on me. True love, man. So let me give you a little backstory before I answer that. I've had oh, not the oh, best. Oh well, shit! Oh, I'm gonna kill that fool. <laughs> True was got you. Now, now who's got several baby mamas? Damn! I said I know I only got one. <laughs> oh fuck! Here Start laughing. Go. Start laughing. Here we go. Uh, I love our live podcast with our our amazing audience. <laughs> that I'll talk my shit to later, but. Oh, All right, but your definition of true love, what's the backstory? What's Okay, so my mom was married once, right? Um, and that was my first example of what not to do. Okay. Mm. Um, so my, my real dad, he left out the picture. Uh, my mom married um, my little sister's stepdad. Um, they met when I was five, whatever. And that was like a complete whole situation. You know, there was a lot of, it was toxic. There was a lot of, do we want to wait after this? <laughs> This is LA, baby. This is LA. You know how we do. Every 10 minutes, that uh, ambulance will be passing by. <laughs> um, so anyways, yeah. So my mom was married once, and that was really an example for me of, like, what not to do. So it was toxic, yeah. trolling, jealous, um, infidelity from my stepdad's side. And that was just a mess. Now my mom, you know, years later, remarried. And... They have, it was not a, you know, perfect marriage, obviously, but a very intentional um, marriage, a very healthy, you know, they're like best friends. Um, they work at their marriage. They go to date night. They um, go wow. to marriage retreats and things like that. So for me, true love, I think is really, it's not this whole fairy tale that I think that, that, that people put out they think that it is. Yeah. I think true love is a lot more raw than people think. Like, I don't think they understand what the commitment, like we were talking earlier about going based yeah. off of feelings. People think that like, oh, I meet this person, you know, I'm all in love and then it's going to be like this forever. You know, we're going on these cute dates and all this stuff. And now five years, 10 years later, you don't really like love this person anymore. Like, yeah. it's almost like, oh, hey, what's going on? Right. And that's kind of where I feel like now we have the statistic, which I'm sure is a lot higher than it used to be, which is 50 percent of marriage yeah. and divorce. For sure. And I think it's because of that. Like, number one, people don't understand the work. Um, people don't understand the reality of what a marriage is like and yeah. what love is. Because true love is not just the feeling. It's a commitment. Yeah. Right? Think about what true love means in the context of a woman giving birth, for example. Mm -hmm. So when a woman gives birth, she probably experiences one of the most, you know, horrendous feelings that a, a human being could feel. 
right? And that single horrific act, she's actually doing the single most loving thing she could do, which is give birth. So pain, true love, right? Mm. And she raises that baby, it's hard, right? That baby gets to an age where they're difficult. They're teenagers now. They're fighting. Yeah. That mom still is loving them. Even though they're hard to love, they still love them, Yeah. right? Then they leave, right? So you give birth through this horrendous pain. You raise them up. You give them your life. You spend all this money and time <laughs> on them, and then they leave. Yeah. And that's the, what, is, what do they say? That a mother's love is like the closest love than, uh, you know, than God. So true love, what is it? It's not this, oh, I feel, I, I love you so much today. God, I just want to be in your presence. Sometimes it's like, I can't stand you. <laughs> Honestly, it, it, it is, it's that sometimes, yeah. right? I can't, I, I, yeah. damn, like, we're not, the, our relationship right now isn't that great, but it's intentional, right? And for me, it's just accepting somebody exactly for who they are, yeah. not for who you want them to be. Because I think that's one thing that happens is you meet people and you have this expectation that like, you're going to do X, Y, Z. And if you don't do that, then you don't love me. Yeah. But it's like, or you need to be like this, right? We, we come in with the expectations. Yeah. And when those expectations aren't met and we no longer have that feeling, it's like we out. But true love is really coming in and saying, okay, this is who you are. This is who you're not. And I accept you. And, yeah. and, and now we have to work at this consistently. Again, we got to pay rent every month, right? Like, yeah. So we got to be at this relationship every month. And that's true love. But the other stuff, that's just the feeling, right? That's just the the now, the, the attraction, the, the yeah. you know, this romance, which is, that's not going to go far. So that's my definition of true love. Now, can you give us your top, top one, top two, or top three uh, ways to land a brand deal for other people that are trying to be influencers, are having aspirations to working with big brands, like how you did with Acura, how you did with... Uh, all these other ones, if you go through your IG, but top three things or less or more to land a brand deal and how to monetize off of it. First of all, I never saw Acura coming. Acura, I, I thought was a scam. Ran you over. First. I ran literally you over. ran me over. I thought I was a scam. And literally, I replied. And it was because I never knew it was Acura. Mm -hmm. This marketing company hit me up and they were like, hey, we, and I was like, so finally I had the meeting and I was like, oh, this is for real. <laughs> so that's that's that. But yeah. um. The way I've approached it, again, is is number one, I think you have to be organic. One thing that I've always heard feedback from brands is that we love that you're organic and genuine, right? Yeah. And I think your followers and brands can know when you're just chasing the bag, yeah. right? which is not bad. Go ahead, do your thing. But if you want longevity and you want to work with some of the best, I think that they have to believe that who you're putting out is who you are. Because, again, if, if I'm a brand, I'm going to pay you money to promote my product your followers have to organically cool. like you and yeah. want to support. But if you buy your followers and you're being fake and you're just working with whoever, then everyone's going to be like, ah, it's just another money grab. Like they paid them to say this, you know what yeah. I mean? And so um, that's number one, being organic. So I've actually turned down things from big brands that I'm like, this doesn't align with me. Like I, I can't promote that. Like I, I don't like it. It's not my style. It's not something that interests me. You know, and so being really true to yourself, number one, again, organic, genuine yeah. is how you're going to land those brand deals. Second of all, being marketable. You said earlier, there are people who have 700,000 followers, but they don't talk about anything or what they put out is not marketable at all. Right. So you want to work with, let's call it Dior, right, which is one of the brands I worked with. But you're putting out content that Dior is going to look at that and be like, we don't want to be associated with that. And it is not, I'm not, I'm not saying like in an explicit way, but it could just yeah. be you're putting out, I don't know, drama content or just something that brands are going to want to work with. Yeah. You have to be marketable, right? Are you marketable? The content you put out, like what you show and how you interact with your followers, is that a way that like a brand could be like, oh, he does that? Great. Like we want to be involved with that, right? So being marketable, organic, marketable. The last one would be, I think, damn, I just had it and I just lost it. I think I need a sip. Um, <laughs> Um, no, I really lost my train of thought on the third one. Well, that's it, folks. You got two. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't go through step one, you won't get to step two. And stay tuned for the step three. Yeah, uh, and that's it. No, I think uh, being also um, unique in your space. Um, for me, I always try to be. I work really hard when I go in working with brands. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if they come out of a concept, I, I try to go above and beyond. Right being different, being unique. I mean, some of the stuff, right? Like you can't control. It's like, all right, this is all we can do. But I think brands really look at that too. Yeah. Um, 
again, just being organic, being marketable and, and kind of really putting yourself out there because the content you put out, everyone looks at that. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Um, the content you put out, right? Like brands have to be able to like kind of plug themselves in what you, what you already do, right? So for example, um, I've, I've done things for free because um, I wanted to show other brands that I'm working with brands. I, like in the beginning, I wasn't getting paid at all. And I'd be like, but it's beneficial for me to put this out, number one, for the experience, because now I'm like negotiating with the brand. They're sending me uh, campaign details on like what they want and their deliverables. So you get to learn the, the verbiage, right? The industry, but the back end, right? How to negotiate, how to like read yeah. what their expectations are and then how to put it out, right? So now you have all this experience of working with them, um, but now you're showing the, the people because people don't really know what you're getting paid for, what you're not. Right. So you yeah. can put out content and you could be like, damn, all I got was free products. But people are like, oh, my God, he got to work with that brand. And you're like, yeah, but it's it's marketing. Right. Yeah. What's marketing? It's taking one thing and making it look like a certain way that's more appealing. And so, be, again, going back to being marketable. Right. So sometimes and some people won't do that. Some people will be like, oh, like they only want to give me free product. And they're a little bit arrogant about it. And they're like, I'm not going to work with them. It's like, what do you mean? Like, how do you expect to get other work? Yeah. You know, it's almost like a, I have a buddy of mine who's a barber and we were talking about it a while back. He was telling me about when he first started and he was like, dude, I used to give out free haircuts all the time because it was just about showing what you can do to people. Nice. And so that's another thing is like people think that you're going to get these brand deals by just existing. No, like put out content with like stuff you have at your house. Yeah. Right. Oh, I got an outfit this weekend. Even though it's not a brand deal, it's not a brand that's giving you free clothes. Use what you have in your closet. Hey, perfect outfit got a deal for this weekend. Put it together. Oh, this is my skincare routine. And you have to love to want to put that out already. And again, what's a brand to do? Oh, you put skincare routine out? Oh, well, here's, here's this brand. product. Yeah. Use this one. Oh, you put mm. out fashion pics or you do this? Do that. So that's like my best idea is just yeah. be marketable, be organic, and just put out content that a brand can just plug and play into it, but being yourself. Yeah. Right? A style that's unique to you, but their brand can be like, oh, you recommend yeah. this to people? Okay, great. Hey, here you go. Perfect. All right. Um, Hardest lesson you had to learn throughout your life? Uh, my internal dialogue is the most important thing ever. Internal dialogue to myself. An example or an instance of where this came to light, that your internal dialogue was the most important thing to you? So you know how I said that earlier this year, life was not like yeah. this? Okay. So earlier this year, I was going through probably like the worst patch of my life. So... Mm -hmm. How you were saying earlier, how you got caught up in this mix of yeah. alcohol and, and this stuff, right? So I had moved to Houston and uh, I went for about, there's a job opportunity out there. Um, um, I was, there's another thing in the background I don't really want to get into, but um, let's just say it all fell through, everything. So I was away from home. I was in another state. Um, I was around people that loved me, right? I had friends and their family. They were amazing. But I just felt like completely lost. I'm like, I moved to another state. I thought this career path was going to work. I thought this other thing was going to work. I'm like, clearly nothing I try to do works. Mm. Right? Mind you, I had already at that time, I, I'm, I'm having brand deals. I have Dior. Okay, cool. And, but people often look at you and they'll be like, oh, he has, again, they, he has it all together. It's going great. Yeah. And in turn, you're like, I'm not shit. Right. And so when, again, your life around you is going terrible. And again, you already feel like that about yourself and life's confirming that feeling. You're like, I'm a piece of shit. Like I suck. I'm a loser. I'm a bum. Like I'm never going to figure it out. And I remember I come back to LA and I'm here and I'm still trying. That's when real media comes into the picture. That's it. That's taking time to build up and all this other stuff. And I'm like, dude, again, I'm trying. And no matter how hard I work, no matter what I do, I'm like, I just, it, I'm just destined to never get like anywhere. Hmm. And so I'm having this negative self talk and I'm, and I'm drinking. Oh, by the way, yeah, I'm drinking like two bottles of wine a night, every night, just throwing it in. And I'm like, I'm already, that, that voice in the back of my head's like, why are you doing this to yourself? It started, right? And it's just going. So I'm having this negative talk. You're, you're, you're a fucking bum. Like, we knew it. You're, you can't do anything. This fucking terrible, like, yeah. inner dialogue. Yeah. And one day I was just like, why the fuck am I so bad to myself? Mm. I was like, why do you, why? Um, if we talk like this to somebody else, they'd probably, like, want to off themselves by now. You know, and I was like, and kind of you're not that far away from that. Like, what's why, why are you like that? And I almost had to like backtrack to why. And again, mm -hmm. it was like because I had all these uh, thoughts in my head already. And it was like, you know what? I looked at everything that was going around me. I was like, okay, this fell, this fell, 
that fell. And I just honestly, this is going to sound super vulgar, but I just was like, fuck you. Like I looked at life and I was like, fuck you. This is not my reality. Like I literally one night I was like, fuck you. I don't accept this as my reality. Everything that's going around me, this is not who I am. These are things that are happening. I'm trying, I'm getting out. And again, I had to think back to when I was younger. Who am I? Yeah. And I thought back to when I was young, man. I was like, fuck, when I was in middle school, I sucked at soccer. So what I do every fucking summer, I'd go train. I'd go run sprints, train by myself. High school, I, I, I couldn't make varsity. So what I do in the summer, I fucking trained and I, I got to varsity. And I was like, no, we're not, we're not a fucking bum. We're not a fucking loser. We fucking work hard. And you know what? We're fucking working hard and things are coming out. But this is not who I am. This is just things that are happening. Bro, after that, maybe three days later, I get the Acura deal. Wow. I, I, when I was like, fuck you, this is not who I am. I'm bigger than this. I'm going to be great. Watch me. I'm talking about life, not people. I'm just looking at life. Like, fuck you. Acura calls. And it's just back to back to back to back to back. And it's just going. And I'm like, that's when I learned. I was like, you know what? Shit wasn't happening because I'm like, oh. It's your energy you're putting out there. Yeah. You're talking. But your intention when you're doing things, you're yeah. going into things like, well, let me see how it That's, goes. Uh, yeah. uh, maybe, you know, and of course, if you try anything, you're like, um, you know, let me, maybe yeah. and anything, bro. You try to talk to a girl. You're like, oh, let me mm. see. You know, <laughs> how's that going to go for you? No, bro. Yeah. So I was like, nah, this is it. This isn't it. So that was my biggest lesson, man. It's just um, the way you talk to yourself really shapes the world around you. Yeah. And so you really have to believe it for everybody else to see it and mm -hmm. for that life to really happen for you. Man, congratulations. Appreciate it, baby. Congratulations on having a a year where you find yourself and you find yourself for it. Yeah. I think that's just where we can end this amazing episode of this amazing podcast. Um, you know, you you gotta realize you are worth it. You are capable of being great, being happy, and being successful mm -hmm. in any way, shape, or form that you're imagining. As corny as it sounds, dreams become reality. Dream until your dreams come true. That's it. Yeah. Work to it. It's not going to come easy. It's not going to be one day to another. But the more you work at it, the more, the closer you are to it becoming reality. And again, that's why we're here. That's why we're here in this position that we're in now, 2024, coming in like we made it, yeah. you know? And if you have the opportunity to wake up in the morning, as bad as you may feel, hey, you have an opportunity to change that. You are in full control of what your life is and what your life can be. It's up to you. Not up to your mom, to your dad, your brother, your sister, your girlfriend, boyfriend, friends. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. If you want to go get it, go and get it. Don't wait for nobody. Don't wait for the perfect time. Don't wait nothing. You go and get it right here, right now. And I promise you, and I've always said this, you will thank yourself in six months yeah. because you went and go and you went and did it. Not, oh man. I should have, no? No, you did. Remember, that's why you're here. Now the problems that you have now aren't the ones that you had before, but look, now your problem is how much stuff you got going on. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, man, Jay, I appreciate you coming through, sharing your story with us, sharing everything from knowledge to experiences to make everybody laugh and really think about a lot of shit after <laughs> this. <laughs> But, man, if I could tell you, man to man, friend to friend, man, I'm proud of you. Appreciate that. This was amazing that you're shining, you're in your light, in your moment, in your season. And 2024 is not fucking ready. Oh, we're just getting started. Oh, man. We're just getting started. And, and likewise, man, I mean, you holding this podcast and holding these conversations, like I said earlier, us being where we're at, like people listening. So the lives that you're changing through these conversations. Thank you. Bro, people, you can save a life through a perspective change. And so imagine how many lives you've saved. So I'm going to give you your flowers, you know, as Appreciate we come into you. this new year's. Imagine how many lives you've saved through the perspectives that you've given people. Because it's small, Appreciate man. You. We come in here, we, we hit record, and it's like, but somebody else that's at their house right now crying their eyes out who's going through the most difficult time, probably thinking about offering themselves, you probably changed their life yeah. and saved them. So Thank flowers you. to you. You're changing, you know, lives. So yeah. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, brother. Man, another episode, A Toast to Life. Shout out to Kanye Rumbar for hosting us one more time. Shout out to everybody watching, subscribing, everything. A Toast to Life, you know, most authentic, most organic podcast out here, baby. Let's, Let's go. It, baby. <laughs>